Hi everyone, so the other day I was thinking it would be really cool if I could share with you how I manage my own accounts, cash flow and budgets. This formula that I created for myself, I created many years ago and it's always kept me out of trouble. So I'm really excited about sharing this with you. Now also, whenever I've shared this formula with anyone through my online Skype consultations or through the Sugar Tribe, They've always loved it and they've said it's been so helpful for them in getting out of debt, getting on top of their finances and they've become so protective of this. It's almost become like a financial ritual for them on a regular basis. Sometimes it's the smallest, most simplest changes that have the biggest and best impacts. Life is too short to be worried about money. If you could help me by sharing this video, I would be so incredibly grateful. All right, so essentially I have five accounts. All these are accounts are with the one bank. Now the reason I do this is because I can see my entire financial cash flow situation in the one screen. No logging in and out of different apps or accounts floating around inside of the space. Everything is here. Plus another really important benefit to having it all with the one account or the one bank I should say is if I ever need to quickly transfer money between these accounts, it's there within seconds. I don't need to wait overnight for money to be transferred through. It's there ready to roll. Now I will talk you through each of these different accounts and how they work and how I structure them. And I'll also share with you my other secret hacks for success at the end of this video. So make sure you watch all the way to the very end. So first up is my everyday banking account. Attached to this is my linked ATM debit card. This is where all my short term expenses come out of. So if I'm grabbing a coffee with a friend or going out for lunch with a friend, I will pay for that with my ATM debit card. This is where all my daily, weekly, fortnightly, monthly expenses come out. Now within this budget, I also allow myself to have some money for clothing, shoes and accessories of a set amount. I also have a set amount for during the week, Monday to Friday, and I have a set amount for weekend entertainment. So it makes me accountable and responsible, but I know that it fits within this budget. So I, I respect it and honor it, but it comes out of this account because it fits into the category of being daily, weekly, fortnightly, and monthly. Second up, I've got my life and emergency money account. Now, this is where we stockpile or create a financial float in planning and preparation of those irregular bills, quarterly, the biannual, and the annual ones. These are the ones that often get us into trouble. Before we know it, it's Christmas time and we've suddenly got to buy gifts for people, we've got a holiday booked, it's an expensive time of the year. If you haven't planned and prepared financially for that, so many people reach for their credit cards and that is a really toxic place. And I often find that once you're in credit card debt, what you have this mindset where you think, oh, well, it's $6,000 of credit card debt already. What's another $500 and you just charge it again. You get deeper and deeper into debt and it's more and more self-destructive. But if you have that money set aside to go, no, it's okay. I've already got $2,000 allocated towards paying off my holiday or paying for some Christmas presents and you know, enjoying the festive season, you're going to feel so much better about this. So this is where you have a financial float that prepares for all those quarterly bills, such as strata bills, water bills, council rate, anything that you pay on a quarterly basis, you stockpile in this account. This also includes the biannual bills that you might get and any annual bills. This is where you plan and prepare for it. But then on top of this account, you also have your emergency money in here. Now, how much emergency money you need is very different from one person to the next. You need to think about what set amount of money would make you sleep well at night knowing that if something happened to you, you can afford to pay for it. So say for example, I realize I need $10,000 emergency money and I realize I need a financial float um, of at least $3,000 to always plan and prepare for these bills, plus take into consideration things that happen in life. This would mean I would always aim to have an account balance of $13,000. Now, if I ever happen to get, say, another flat tire, and I had to take, say, $500 out for a new tire, I would take $500 from this account, transfer it to my credit card to pay for that, or I'd transfer it to my ATM um, everyday account so I can get it out through my ATM debit card and pay for it that way. Once I've paid for it, as soon as I possibly can, I will try and rebuild this account back up to $13,000. That is incredibly important. The third account is my lifestyle account. Your lifestyle account could be something like saving up for a deposit on your first home. It might be saving up for a new piece of equipment, a new car. For me, it's saving up for a holiday. And there's something really warm and fuzzy when I log in to see all my accounts and I see this getting bigger and bigger because I know I am going to be able to enjoy a guilt-free, debt-free holiday 
with this money building up over time. The fourth account is my savings to invest account. As you guys know, I have the thousand dollar project portfolio going, but I also have my own separate investment portfolio that I like to contribute to on a regular basis. So what I would do is as I get paid and I divvy the money up, I also add some money in here so that the money can sit in this savings account whilst I'm doing my research and thinking about what's the next investment I want to make and where is it going to be. It can safely sit in this account and accumulate in the meantime. Then the last account is my thousand dollar project account, which I love. And as you guys know, anytime I'm doing the thousand dollar project and I create, save, hustle, manifest, earn some extra money for the thousand dollar project, it goes into here. The moment I have over a thousand dollars in this account, I go and buy some shares and build my long term passive income stream. If you wanted to, you could essentially make your um, saving to invest account your thousand dollar project account is completely up to you or you can be like me and have two going at the same time but I wouldn't recommend any more than that down the bottom is my credit card and to be honest I only really use my credit card for a purchase maybe over a certain amount of money where I really want to collect those um, frequent flyer or loyalty points and what I will actually do is say for example I have to pay for something I'm buying a gift for a friend it's allocated in my budget say it costs two hundred dollars I will either within seconds of buying this with my credit card, literally transfer $200 from this account or that account onto my credit card. So there's never any debt created. Now on that note, I also do this other hack, which is a rounding up hack. So the other day I had to buy a special lunch for Rocco um, for a sports carnival and they only took credit card. The lunch costs $7.50. I pay for it on my credit card and I immediately transfer not $7.50 to my credit card, but $10. I do this with most of my purchases when it comes to using this credit card. So it's actually not only never any money owing on it and I'm collecting all those really valuable frequent flyer points, which helps save for my holidays, it's actually got a buffer. I've actually got a surplus on the account and it means at the end of the month or the end of the quarter, if I've got a couple of hundred dollars or more on that a card, I can then go and reward myself with a nice treat or a nice experience or some sort of luxury purchase that I'm going to really enjoy. But it's, so, it's a really nice habit that I really value in managing my own cash flow budgets and bank accounts. Now another good hack that I use that could be helpful for you if you have a mortgage is is I use my emergency money is not in my life account. I actually have my emergency money sitting against my home loan with my redraw facility switched on. Now the benefit by doing this is I will save more money in time and interest by having it against my home loan because I pay less money in interest and potentially pay it off faster than I would in earning interest by it sitting in an emergency account. But if you do this, you must make sure that your redraw facility is switched on. You will not incur any fees or charges by transferring money out of your home loan. Now, another little hack that I find is really helpful in managing my cash flow is even though some of my bills are quarterly, I'll actually pay them monthly. So say for example, my council rates are around $300 per quarter. Instead of getting the stress of having that quarterly bill and worrying about whether I have enough money in my life plus emergency money, I will actually treat that bill as though it's a monthly bill. And I will factor $100 per month out of my budget from the everyday account and transfer $100 to my council bill every month. I know technically um, I'm missing out on potentially earning some interest, but it's such a small amount. I'd rather the peace of mind knowing that that bill is actually paid. And when I get the, the bill in the mail, it actually shows that I owe nothing because I've already prepaid all those bills. I'm completely on top of it. If you have particular bills such as your council rates, water bill, look at maybe trying to pay them on a monthly basis so that you're creating more consistency in your life. It really does make a big difference. And then my final hack to my secret of managing these accounts is I check them on a regular basis. I never get anxious about looking at my bank accounts, seeing what the balance is. I take full responsibility and ownership of my accounts and manage them correctly. I will log into my accounts at least once a day, if not twice a day. A couple of benefits and reasons behind doing that. I know exactly where I stand financially. I also know if I'm sticking to my budget or not. I'll know if I've spent too much money during the week and need to take some money out of my weekend money or if I've actually got some money left over from my clothing accessories and shoe allowance. I know where my money's going but also it stops online fraud. If my card is ever skimmed I quickly catch on to it and inform my bank account and stop them dead in their tracks. The online fraud is growing all the time and it's scary how many people get hit with this and it doesn't they don't realize until it's too late. So check your bank accounts on a regular basis but also get excited about these 
other accounts because they're actually financial goals and they're really exciting watching them build and grow. And as I said, you can use the thousand dollar project if you want to build any of these accounts as well. Now you're probably wondering, okay, this all sounds good, makes sense, but how do I know how much money to put into each of these accounts? This is the other part of my success. You must put money in the accounts the day that you get paid. Say for example, I get paid $5,000 after tax eat on the first of every month. Do a budget and work out exactly how many daily, weekly, fortnightly, monthly expenses and I add them up. Using the Sugar Budget app makes this so much easier to do. And say I work out that after this is my total after tax, I'll put AT, I work out I need at least $2,000 in this account per month to cover all these expenses. I then work out I want to put say $1,300 per month into building my emergency money and my financial float life account. I then decide I'm going to put $700 into per month to saving up towards my next holiday. This shows I've now allocated $4,000 of my $5,000 deposit. I then decide, okay, I'm going to do $500, for example, per month for my savings to invest account and another $500 to start the $1,000 project. That comes to a total of $5,000. You would do this the first of every month on the moment you, that money hits your account. Because if you leave this for a couple of days, you might get tempted, you might distract it, and it will throw you off kilter. You must get into the, the habit, the ritual of doing this the moment you get paid. And that means you've got money, all your financial ducks are lined up and you're on top of achieving your goals. But as I said, you might want to prioritize making this, building up this life and emergency money account a lot faster. Now, if that was the case, I would recommend you maybe hold off on either of these accounts if possible so in this situation I would say okay all right I want to prioritize building this up as fast as possible I'm gonna make this say two thousand dollars per month I'm gonna cut this down to say three hundred dollars per month I'm gonna cut this down to three hundred dollars per month as well and I'm gonna make the thousand dollar project account say for example four hundred dollars per month that then still adds up to $5,000. But you can decide, you can tweak this any way you like to build up towards your $5,000. So you're allocating money religiously on a ritual, habitual process to these accounts so that you always stick to your budget. All right, everyone, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to share this video with any of your family and friends or on social media, please feel free to go ahead and share it. I'm really determined to help as many people as possible and I'd love you to help me achieve this goal of my own. Have a fantastic week, everyone. And if you're ever interested in having a Skype consultation with me, please click on the links below and it will take you to a page where you can not only read about how they work, but also you can go ahead and book a Skype consultation with me. Have a fantastic week, everyone. I will see you later in the week for Lifestyle Love. Ciao for now.